Hey everyone, I was working on an app recently and I needed a Postgres database for local development. I didn't want to go through a long setup process and I found this awesome trick to spin up a Postgres database super quickly using Docker. So let me show you and believe me, it's a game changer. So before we start, make sure you have Docker installed on your machine and Docker Compose. I think if you install Docker, Docker Compose just comes with it. So just check. I'm on Mac right now. Docker, you can just simply go to docker.com and download that for your machine. If you're on Windows, you have to use Linux because Docker only works with Linux and not Windows, I believe. But do um, do your research there. So once you install your Docker, then you will have something like a Docker desktop platform like this. And I'm going to show you more how it looks like. Now let's dive into the cool part. So instead of manually installing the Postgres SQL database, which you can, but you have to go through the entire process, your application and the Postgres database is going to be installed globally onto your machine. And I, I want that isolated in just in a container and that's the benefit of it right so if i want to delete a table i can delete the entire database i can so what we're going to do is we'll define everything in one simple docker compose yaml file let's create that so i'm already in a pg docker directory it's a folder you can create this file anywhere so i was working in a next application and i just had the docker compose yaml file inside my uh, file system right so here I'm going to go ahead and create this file. I'm going to utilize the Mac terminal command here, touch, that will create this file for me, which is docker-compose.yml. And I'm going to open this up with my editor. You can use whatever uh, editor you want. I'm going to use docker-compose-yml uh, file in my Visual Studio code. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, make sure that uh, we have some services set up. The way the docker-compose-yml file actually works, it's a, it's a set of instructions that you give Docker to spin up a service for you in that container. So this is going to be the instructions uh, for your Docker. So the first thing what we want to do here is I'm going to write services and make sure you indent. That's very important. YML is very strict with it. It's going to give you some error if the indention is off that. So services, what service I want to install. Now these services can be anything, right? Your entire application, your web application, your server application, whatever. Docker, the beauty of Docker container is that you can run in isolation uh, your entire application. In this case, I'm going to keep things simple and just want to spin up the Postgres database. So here I'm going to say services. I'm going to call this DB here so because I'm starting a database here I want to then what kind of DB here I want what kind of version the image so what it does is that docker actually downloads the version that I'm going to specify here so for postgres I can say post grass colon I can say latest here uh, this is the version, the latest version is going to download, but I want to specify a version for my case because I already have, for a different project, I have already have another Postgres um, database installed on my Docker, and I want to use the same image because it's already installed, right? So I'm going to say 16.4-alpine is going to be my Postgres uh, version, and uh, after this image, I want to give this a container name. So this container name, I'm just going to call this pg-db. Uh, that's just going to be the container name. You can name it whatever you want there. And um, the second one I'm going to say basically is environment. Here the environment is actually going to be your like the Postgres database user, username, password, all that, all that stuff. So here the first one I want to say post Postgres underscore db and Postgres here and I'm going to keep everything simple I'm going to call everything so here I'm going to say user which is going to be Postgres and also the password make sure this is indented and one thing here is that this is that's why it's green right we want 
the environment variable name to be red. So it it basically means that I have done something wrong. Wrong, and the thing is, it has to be colon instead of equal sign, right? So we have the environment Postgres. Now, the username and password are pretty simple here. This database is only going to run in my local machine, so nobody is actually going to get into my database here. So I don't have to worry about this one, but obviously if you're creating a database outside for deployment purpose, obviously have something much more secure, right? So after this, what we wanna do here on the same level on the environment, I want to give this the port uh, name and this port's name is going to be I'm just going to uh, here in colon I'm just going to map this onto the same 5432 uh, colon 5432 I'm just mapping that the same port that uh, usually docker or uh, postgres actually starts so here uh, I want to do on the same level here I want to do some volumes and for the volume I want, I'm gonna create this. I'm gonna say Postgres and uh, underscore data. So the volume is gonna call Postgres data and that's going to stay in var and then inside lib. And then inside lib, I'm gonna say Postgres QL. I'm gonna call this again, volumes. And here I'm going to have, I'm just gonna call this post Postgres underscore data because I want the volume to be used from this location here, right? So it should be all good. Let me go ahead and save this. And in my terminal here, now what I want to do is I want to do docker compose up. So if I run docker compose up, it should if there's no error, if there's an error, it should give me an error. If not, then it should run my DB here, dash T, and uh, it's giving us an error, like I told you before. So this time, it the error is not, not very specific. Service.volumes additional property Postgres data is not allowed. So like I told you, like YAML file is very strict with this intention. So the problem was this volumes right here the, uh, at the end, this is actually not going to be nested inside the service, but it's actually going to be at the same level as services, right? So I'm going to save this and try to run this one more time. And look at this, this is actually running our uh, uh, Postgres database on here. So in this case, let's go ahead and test it out. What I wanna do here is first Docker PS and with dash A, it's actually going to give us the container ID. It's also going to give us, so let me make this bigger here. So you can see the container ID here and uh, this one 16 seconds ago pgdb dash db is the one that uh, is currently running so what i want to do is i want to get inside the p uh, sql uh, right so uh, p sql is the terminal kind of like um, way to interact with your postgres database you can obviously go to do the pg admin or i like to do these days is that i like um, an orm so i use prisma orm so Prisma actually gives you a studio. So that's one way you can uh, interact with your database. Uh, the second way is actually going through the terminal itself. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna say Docker and this time I'm gonna say exact. So here's the command. So Docker exact is execute dash IT. I think IT I stands for interactive and table. And this is the name which we gave our container, which is going to be pg-db. And uh, psql is how we want to interact with. And this is going to be the user, which is Postgres. So Postgres is the username here. So let's go ahead and enter. Now we are inside our table. So backslash dt is going to show you if there's any table. There's none because we haven't, it's just brand new. So let's go ahead and create a table. We're gonna say create table here. Let's call this an example with some data. So data is going to be the column and is going to be type of char. 
There we go. It's actually giving me create table. That means it created the table. Let's run that DT command one more time. And now you can see that we have the table here. That's it. No need for long installation. Just one YAML file and you're good to go. If you found this useful, drop a like, subscribe and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or cool Docker tricks. Happy coding.